Hi guys, it's Brit Lyons. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to talk about a strange encounter that I had a couple of weekends ago with someone that I thought was my friend. Basically, without sugarcoating it, I'm opening up today to you guys to tell you the story of how I was groomed by a teacher in high school. I genuinely felt compelled to talk to you guys about this because I truly believe that these situations aren't addressed enough or taken as seriously as they should be. Just a trigger warning, I am going to talk about like sexual predators in this video, so if this has happened to you, I just want to give that warning and let you guys know. I'm not going to talk about anything graphic, but that is the topic of discussion here. Just another disclaimer that I am going to add very quickly before this video is that I don't know truly what anyone's intentions are, right? We don't know what anyone's truly thinking in their head, what they're trying to do, what their um, goal is behind any of their actions. But from a strong gut feeling that I have and based on all of these circumstances together as a whole, especially after having this encounter with him, it's just opened my eyes and made so much sense to me and I just wish I could have seen all of these actions and situations for the red flags that they were. And I feel that I know it in my heart and I believe that his intentions were not, were not right. I also talked to my friends and family about the situation and encounter after it happened. Some of them even witnessed the encounter and vocalizing my confusion definitely brought me to that realization. Obviously, I'm not going to be divulging personal and private information in this video as this video's point is not to ruin someone's marriage or someone's life, but it's to stress to those of you who are underage that people like this do exist out there and you do have to be careful even after you turn 18. I just also want to say that any disclaimer given in the beginning of this video is not to contradict like anything I say in this video. I personally truly believe that this person's actions were malicious and that they didn't have good intentions behind them at all. I'm just truly not in the business of ruining lives. My channel was created to spread positivity and make people happy and make people laugh and make people smile. Um, there are going to be times where I feel compelled to come on here and share some of my story and share some of my life so that you guys out there can benefit from that because I truly feel that when you're compelled to talk about something, that means that something inside you is moving you to do it and even though it might be uncomfortable, we should still talk about things that do make us uncomfortable and make us sad because feeling those emotions allows us to feel them and accept them and move on from whatever caused those feelings. It's important that I provide some context to you guys before I actually get into the story of like the actual encounter that I had a couple weekends ago just because all of these circumstances and situations might not seem like big deals on their own but when you factor in all of them as a whole, that's when the entire encounter makes sense and kind of comes to fruition. So just bear with me through that and if you guys want to hear about the actual encounter that happened and the wrap up to this video, please keep on watching. So this basically started all back in high school. I did have this teacher twice throughout my high school experience, once in sophomore year and then again the next year in junior year. I'm not sure if it's like this in other schools, but to my understanding, in at least in my high school, if you were a high school teacher and you taught a certain grade, you can certainly bounce around to other grades, 9th, 10th, 11th, or 12th, just depending on, I think, preference and how many teachers that they had to fill those spots. I don't really know how it works, but I had him for a sophomore curriculum and a junior curriculum. I apologize if that was a weird jump. My camera just died, so I had to change my battery. If I need to address him by name, for the sake of privacy, I'm just going to call him teacher because genuinely I can't think of anything else to call him, so that's going to be it. So teacher and I met when I was in my sophomore year of uh, class. I was 15 years old at the beginning of the school year, and I believe he was in his early 30s. I think he was like 29 or 30. Like he was, he was a younger teacher. Right away, everyone in my class absolutely loved him. He had an awesome personality, but I think his younger age also kind of contributed to that as well. He was like super sarcastic and really intelligent, but also really laid back and like cool with the students. He was the one teacher that literally everyone went to for advice, no matter what kind of student they were. They weren't embarrassed to go to him and ask him what 
his opinion was on anything and he even opened up his classroom to other students to let them come in and hang out on his lunch breaks instead of leaving campus to go get something to eat. And when he did leave to go get something to eat, he would actually leave the classroom unlocked, let students just hang out in there until he got back. So he taught English class, which if you guys know anything about me, um, that was my favorite subject in school. Um, I love to write and it's a big passion of mine. I'm pretty sure both sophomore and junior year I was one of his best students because I genuinely cared about the subject matter. When I was younger, my dream career was to be an author in high school and he definitely stoked that fire and fueled that passion in me for writing because he would read the things that I wrote and give me feedback on them. And looking back, I'm unsure if he was actually genuinely interested in the things that I was writing or if that was just another tactic to make himself seem more approachable. And it's sad to think that something that I loved so much could have been used as like a manipulation strategy. But I think it's important to note that the things that you love the most can absolutely be used against you if the wrong person is involved in helping you pursue that passion. Oftentimes I would open up to him about my mental health because I was currently going to therapy for severe depression and anxiety and later in my junior year I was diagnosed with manic depression and severe anxiety and panic disorder. He told me that he was also someone who was prone to depression and was also taking medication for it to cope with those symptoms. And honestly, I'm really not sure what was true and what wasn't, just because I feel like our entire relationship was based on manipulation. So that's another sad thing to think of, that this, this you know, parental figure could have been lying to me about even having a mental illness or not, just to make himself seem more relatable. But regardless of him actually having a mental illness or not, I still do think that he was fully aware that he could use that as another thing to open up to me and get me to relate to him in that way. We pretty much talked about everything to each other and by the end of junior year I hadn't really considered him my teacher anymore but I considered him my friend. All of my senior year I actually spent like any breaks in my schedule hanging out in his classroom regardless of if he was teaching or not because we had gotten so close. He even used to let me grade tests for other classes which is definitely another red flag. By doing this, he was separating me from the other classmates by giving me a responsible task to do for him. And when I was in high school, we were never alone in his classroom, but that's definitely where I considered my safe space to be. My last full week of classes when I was a senior, I had such a bad case of senioritis that I actually spent the entire week, like full days, full school days in his classroom. I remember he had a social media account that he used to allow students that had graduated and that weren't in his classes anymore to follow him on. And I've heard of teachers giving students their Facebook once they've graduated, once they were considered alumni, but I don't really think it's normal to give your 18 year old former student your cell phone number and start texting them. After I graduated high school, I left for college. Um, I didn't go very far, I just went to a community college and summer was really quiet, but about August, September is when we picked back up texting a lot. And I know where your mind might be going, but I personally never looked at him as anything other than a friend. During this period of texting back and forth, he opened up a lot more to me than I initially thought possible. He would tell me that he was super unhappy in his marriage and that he felt like he married the wrong person and that he was very depressed and basically complained nonstop to me about his wife. I'm not gonna get into the details of what he did tell me just because I do value privacy and I just don't feel like that's my information to share on the internet even though he did come to me and tell me all of this information willingly. For months we would text all day every day from morning to night, initiated mostly by him with a routine good morning text. One day he randomly asked me to go out for coffee with him and I accepted and he picked a small hole in the wall coffee shop that was super out of the way and I met him there and he bought me coffee. I accepted it because I didn't think it was like a date or anything. I still considered him a friend and my friends and I go out for coffee all the time. 
I do distinctly remember really wanting to talk to him about college because I had just started and I was in this rut where I wasn't really sure if I wanted to continue with college or if I wanted to pursue other non-traditional options. So I had wanted to use that time as a chance to catch up with him and to seek some advice from someone who had known me on an education-based level for three years at this point. But all he wanted to talk about was his marriage and how depressed he was to be in it. And the reason that I'm probably coming off so cold-hearted right now is because I genuinely feel that he preyed on my empathy and on the fact that I genuinely cared for him as I would any of my friends. And I think after that meeting he kind of caught on and realized that I wasn't going to take the bait and we kind of stopped texting as much and lost touch a little bit. And the routine texting kind of slowly dissipated until he was only texting me on holidays or happy birthday every year. Recently, I heard from a couple of different reliable sources that he had sexual relations with a girl that was also in my class right after senior year had ended, which would have made her just barely 18 or barely legal. And I feel like I need to touch on that really quick because obviously it is a rumor and I'm not him and I'm not the person that he is alleged to have had sexual encounters with, but coming from the sources that it came from, I do believe it to be true and knowing the person that it was, I also still believe that to be probably true. My gut tells me that it is true and that definitely solidifies my feelings on thinking that he may have been wanting to pursue a relationship of that nature with me as well. So this brings me to the final point of my long-winded story. A couple of weekends ago, I was at a church service for some family and my mom knew for a fact that he was going to be there. It's a long story that I'm not going to get into, but basically the point is that my mom knew he would be there and knew exactly where he would be sitting. So I went to say hi to him because though I had heard the rumors of the sexual relations with this other girl, I always want to give people the benefit of the doubt and maybe it wasn't true, so I went just to go and say hi because he was a big part of my life and I felt like I should. So my mom brought Matt and I over to where he would be sitting to say hi, and at that moment everything kind of fell into place for me and made perfect sense because he looked like he had seen a ghost. Upon saying hello, he half pretended like he didn't know who I was at first, and then half pretended like I was just some casual acquaintance that he barely knew. At first, I was really concerned and wondering why he was acting so weird, because a normal friend who hasn't seen you in a couple years or hasn't seen you and genuinely cares about you would see you and be excited to see you and want to say hi and want to catch up and want to meet my husband. Then I realized that his wife and kids were just a couple of rows back, and I realized that we were never friends. And since then, reflecting on all of these red flags honestly makes me sick to my stomach. When I first had this encounter, I wasn't sure how I should feel. I wasn't sure if I should feel ashamed, confused, betrayed, or hurt. And in reality, I was literally feeling all of the above all at once. The afternoon of this event came around and we were at a family party and my mom and I started talking about it and I realized just how upset I was about it. I thought he was just a really cool teacher who wanted to be everyone's friend and I thought that he was my friend. But I genuinely feel now, looking back on all of these situations, that his intent was malicious. It's sad to think that someone I was so close to could have potentially made me a target, but unfortunately it does happen and that's why I wanted to kind of give you guys some insight into the story and let you guys know that unfortunately it does happen. My best advice is to always proceed with caution in these types of situations. In my opinion, you should never just blindly trust that what any adult does is going to be the right thing just because they're older than you. I, and I think most adults do have good intentions, but I just want you guys to be open to the possibility that some of them don't have good intentions. And I want to remind you guys that no matter how cool a teacher, a coach, a babysitter seems, they are not your friends. 
I just wanted to talk about this with you guys because I know I have somewhat of a younger audience and I just want to make you guys aware that not all predators are uncontrollable. Some of them are really good at being patient. They're not always going to be in a white van trying to hand out candy, but it's still wrong morally and ethically to look at a girl that you knew when she was 15 and to prepare for the possible moment of entering a sexual relationship with her three years later, just because it's legal. So please know that there are bad people out there that will abuse their power to get what they want. If they won't be professional with you and seem to have a lack of boundaries, it is okay to outline those boundaries yourself always okay to make sure you're safe so if anything ever seems weird or off to you it probably is and you should listen to your gut so that is it for today's video i know that there wasn't like a huge jump of you know exciting things that did happen in this story time but i genuinely do feel like this person's intentions like i keep saying were malicious and i feel that i i was being prepared for that possibility if i had been a little bit more naive just because you know he did it with one girl doesn't mean that he didn't do it with another. It's I think it's safe to assume that she's probably not the only one. So I hope that you could take something from this video, even if you never personally had um, any type of experience like this. I hope that, you know, I can bring awareness to situations like this. There aren't always predators out there that are uncontrollable and are just going to act like animals. A lot of them are very calculated and a lot of them know what they're doing and they're very precise and they're careful so that they don't get caught. So that's going to be it for today's video, you guys. It's a kind of a hard topic to talk about, but I do hope that you guys were able to take something from it. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye, guys.